Okay, this segment is going to provide a ventilator overview for nurses. So first off, when you see the ventilators in the acute care setting, you're going to see positive pressure ventilators. In other words, they're getting air from positive pressure that's pushed into the airway as opposed to negative pressure ventilation, which is how we breathe normally when air rushes in when there's negative pressure in the chest cavity. So that's just so you realize that. Now, most of what we see is called volume cycle ventilation, meaning that when a preset volume is reached in the airway, the inspiratory phase ends. Pressure cycle ventilation is when the inspiratory phase ends when a preset pressure is reached. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. You'll see mostly volume cycle ventilation when it's going to be short term, when the patient doesn't have any really restrictive diseases, lung diseases, because if you're going to put a certain volume into a patient's alveoli, you want to make sure that you're not going to burst those alveoli. You're going to want to make sure that you're not causing barotrauma because no matter what, that ventilator is going to put that preset volume in their airway. So we're going to talk more about that when we talk about inspiratory pressures and meaning. Whereas with the pressure cycle ventilation, the inspiratory phase ends when that preset pressure is reached. So it's more forgiving in terms of patient's compliance of their lungs or how well their lungs will expand when the air enters it. So that's just a little something else to pay attention to. Does their inspiratory phase end when a preset volume or when a preset pressure is reached? We're also gonna talk about the different modes. First of all, let's talk about assist control ventilation. Assist control ventilation provides the most support for ventilation. So it's gonna give the patient their respiratory rate, that's gonna be dialed in, it's gonna give them a preset tidal volume with a preset FiO2 or fraction of inspired oxygen concentration. We'll talk about PEEP in a minute. But when the patient does initiate their own spontaneous ventilation, in this mode, assist control, the patient is still gonna get a full tidal volume. So you can see it's full support and sometimes it may be too much support. Maybe we can start to back off on some of what the ventilator is doing for their ventilation. As opposed to SIMV or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, it's a little less support of the ventilator, but you could still give the patient full support. The difference is that indeed a preset respiratory rate, a preset tidal volume is gonna be set, a preset FiO2 is gonna be set, except when the patient does initiate those spontaneous breaths, either in between or, or after those mandatory preset number of breaths is done, then the patient's own tidal volume will kick in. So in this mode, if we actually dial down the number of breaths, mandatory breaths that the patient receives, you can really start to have the patient ventilate on their own. So their muscles of ventilation will start to get exercise, so you can start really that weaning process. The longer the patient stays on mechanical ventilation, the harder it is for them to wean off of it. Just like anything that's sedentary, when your diaphragm isn't moving and isn't exercising, it's gonna atrophy. And it makes it that much harder for it to get back and ventilate normally when it's time to take you know, the endotracheal tube out or the trachea out and put the machine aside. Okay, so we did mention these, but indeed you are gonna have these, or the ability to have these preset um, features on your ventilator. Respiratory rate can be set, so we can put in something fictitious in here because on your panel of a ventilator, it's going to be what the patient's ventilator settings are and then it's going to be what the patient is actually doing themselves. So respiratory rate is set on the ventilator here. And then when we do examples, we'll see what happens on the patient's side. Tidal volume. Tidal volume is just that. How much volume is, um, is delivered with each breath? So usually it's five milliliters per kilogram. They used to do a lot bigger tidal volumes, but they found that actually traumatizes alveoli, a higher incidence of barotrauma or, or you know, incidence of pneumothorax and subcute emphysema that you know, is, is traumatizing for their airway. So let's put in a fictitious tidal volume of 400 milliliters. FiO2, FiO2 is the fraction of inspired oxygen concentration. So as 
you know, we spoke about with ARDS, more isn't always better. We like to get as close to room air, atmospheric air as possible. Room air is 21% oxygen and the rest of it is nitrogen with maybe 1% being other gases. So it's very important for the airway to get adequate exposure to that nitrogen. So the FiO2 we want as close to room air, maybe as close to 30%, give them a little extra oomph as possible. So patients that are sicker obviously have higher FiO2. So we're gonna start a patient with, let's say an 80% FiO2 with the first example that we do. That's very high. I tell my students that you can actually tell how sick a patient is just by looking at his ventilator settings. How much FiO2 do they need in order to sustain adequate um, oxygenation to their tissue? So if it's 80% that's required, we know they've got some, some disease going on. Okay, let's talk about PEEP. PEEP is a ventilator maneuver that's used in order to improve patient's PaO2 or oxygenation without increasing their FiO2. Because like we just discussed, we want to try to keep this at bay. We don't want this to, to get to 100, and sometimes it does get to 100. But PEEP is a maneuver that we can do on the ventilator and what it does is it's called positive end expiratory pressure. So it kind of tells you what it does by just knowing what those letters stand for. And what PEEP does is it keeps the alveoli open at end exhalation. So it increases what's called that functional residual capacity. So it increasing the air or pressure really in the alveoli at end exhalation gives you more surface area for gas exchange, gives the alveoli more time for gas to exchange. It actually helps recruit partially collapsed alveoli so they never collapse. And it prevents other alveoli that are kind of threatening to collapse to be propped open. So you can see all this oxygen is very happy, diffusing across the membrane, and you don't have to increase that FiO2 with your PEEP. So PEEP and FiO2 are the two maneuvers on the vet that improve oxygenation. That's an important concept when we talk about what affects the different components on an ABG. So you can see this one said, you know, no PEEP and, you know, so, you know, the alveoli don't have that extra pressure. The diffusion of gases is just diminished and just they're not happy at all. Okay, so let's talk about these settings a little bit in the context of weaning. Remember, we want to try to get the ventilator off just as soon as we intubate it and attach them to that mechanical ventilator. So in this example, we put in a respiratory rate of 16, tidal volume of 400, FiO2 of 80%. And what mode are they on? Well, let's put them on the mode that is the most support. So the assist control mode. So the patient's gonna receive 16 breaths and each breath is gonna have a 400 milliliter tidal volume, FiO2 of 80%. Now over here, you get to see how many breaths the patient is actually taking. So what is he taking? Well, I noticed that, you know, he's taking 18 breaths when I look over at the ventilator dials. And I know that two of those breaths are above and beyond what's been set by the ventilator. So he's taking two spontaneous breaths. He's, he's initiating them at the very least. On this mode, above and beyond the set breaths, the patient's still going to get this full tidal volume. So when you look over here at the tidal volume, it's not going to surprise you very much because we know that on this mode, that's what happens. And we didn't set peep on here, so let's put the peep at 10. Let's look over here at what's called the peak inspiratory pressure. What is that? The peak inspiratory pressure tells you how much pressure it took to deliver that tidal volume. Because no matter what, the patient's going to get that tidal volume on this volume cycled mode positive pressure ventilator. So patients with good compliance, like you and me, hopefully you, are not gonna have very high peak inspiratory pressures because, okay, we're gonna deliver, let's say to you, 400 milliliters, your alveoli are so compliant, they're so healthy, the pressure's gonna be like six centimeters of water pressure. That's physiologic, perfect, two thumbs up, good job. This patient with ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome, when we try to deliver 400 milliliters of tidal volume, you know, you look at the trends, but you'll notice, okay, yesterday it took 10 centimeters of water pressure. 
and then as the day go by, it's taking 15 centimeters of water pressure. So looking at the trends of this peak inspiratory pressure shows you that the patient's compliance is decreasing, is diminishing. You also want to look for abrupt spikes in the peak inspiratory pressure because that could tell you signs of barotrauma. If it's been 10, it's been 10, it's been 10, boom, and all of a sudden the high pressure alarm limit goes off, meaning it totally exceeded what the alarm was set at, then you need to, well, take the patient off the ventilator and bag them, but you need to see, you know, um, auscultate bilateral breath sounds to see if indeed a barotrauma or a pneumothorax occurred. Okay, we're gonna fast forward this a little bit. We're gonna say two weeks went by, and this patient with respiratory distress syndrome is doing so much better, and he's been weaning. We've been dialing down the support of the ventilator. So let's look at today's settings. Today's settings, he has an FiO2 40%. I kind of skipped a couple of things, but now he's on the SIMV mode instead of the assist control mode. That's, that's done with. We're keeping that respiratory rate of 16. That's just where he's at. Tidal volume is also unchanged. Now he doesn't require so much positive end expiratory pressure because obviously he's having a lot easier time oxygenating the FiO2 is 40%. We're just going to give him a little bit of help with a PEEP of 5. On this mode, which supports the patient's own ventilatory efforts so much better than the assist control mode, he's going to get 16 breaths. And with each breath, he's going to get 400 milliliters with that FiO2 of 40% and the PEEP of 5. However, if he breathes above and beyond these 16 breaths, he's going to do his own tidal volumes. So when you look here at the patient panel, you first of all get to see, okay, yeah, he is breathing two breaths on his own above and beyond. But when I look at the, the patient tidal volume, it's gonna mean a lot more to me than it did in the assist control mode because I know on those two breaths that those are his tidal volumes. We're gonna know what he's made of in terms of what kind of breath does he actually deliver to himself. Let's take a moment to think about the parameters that we're going to look at in order to judge how well is this patient weaning. Well, basic vital signs, heart rate, because you know if the heart rate's tachycardic, that's compensatory. They're not doing well, they're, you know, they're hypoxemic blood pressure, um, ABG, O2 saturation, and then respiratory therapist is gonna have other, maybe more sophisticated parameters, but your basic core vital signs, respiratory rate on the vent, obviously work of breathing, you know, do they look like they're in distress? Those kinds of parameters are gonna be looked at on, on an ongoing basis.